let's say the brighter sound could be playing by the bridge same pickup by the bridge with the point of the pick and the pick flat on against the string versus if I played with the shoulder of the pick at an angle on a closer to the neck. So you hear the, how velvety the sound is. And I've, I've changed nothing. I didn't change any of the EQ. I didn't change the pickup. I changed nothing. So today, this wants to be a lesson about uh, tone. You know, when we talk about the tone is in your fingers, uh, this is what we mean. You know, obviously, we, we cannot make a chorus sound with our picking hand or, or fretting hand, but I'm talking about generating a tone that is more pleasing or, you know, the variables of, of, of tone, so to speak, um, that usually we, we explore when we're just playing, let's say, an acoustic guitar or just a guitar into an amp. And uh, when we say tone is in your fingers, I think this is what I mean. These are the variables. And sometimes we explain certain things like, you know, picking by the bridge and picking by the neck, that you can hear the difference in the tone. These are more, this is more than just that, so to speak. And these are, this is a bit of a, a video that I'm making for myself to remember all these things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these are quite handy to share with my students and, uh, and share with everybody, really. So... Um, so these are the variables that I think exist. And if you think of other ones, please just stick them in the comment section. Again, these are something that should, you should be able to play with an acoustic guitar. I'm not talking about the EQ on your amp or the, the type of modeler or pedal board or pedals that you're using. I'm talking about the physicality of playing the guitar with a pick usually. So the picking location, the first one is where in this area you pick. So, you know, this is quite common. Uh, let's say that if we pick closer to the bridge, if I'm playing a one note, usually it's more brittle, it's more trebly, it's more mid rangey honky. Or if I play by the bridge, usually it's warmer, rounder, and this depends on the note, whether, you know, where the harmonics are. Obviously, obviously when I pick here, the, the string, I assume, vibrates more than, than here, so to speak. Um, so this is something you can explore, obviously, if you play bluegrass. You want to play closer to the bridge to have that kind of metallic sound. You play jazz. You want to play more on the neck to have the rounder sound, so to speak. Uh, pick type. The second one is pick type. And I've made a video about that, so I'm not going to talk about it in this video. So I'm going to leave a link in the pin comment and in the description for you to check out. I think I made a couple of videos on the material, shape, and all that. Uh, and uh, the third one is pick side. I actually have uh, recently, let's say in the last five years, I've started playing with the, sh the shoulder of the pick, the round bit of the pick. This is just a classic, you know, teardrop shape. Uh, pick like a fender or a Dunlop, and uh, I would say a lot of people, especially the you know the the more rock and metal, tend to play play with the the pointy bit, and um, that obviously can give you more precision, so to speak. But I find that I like more of a velvety sound because I play a lot of jazz, funk, and stuff like that. So that shoulder, and I will explain in a minute a couple of more. Uh, elements that I think about that, uh, the variables that are involved with that, I tend to play with uh, with the round bit rather than the pointy bit. Now I'm going to play with the pointy bit. You can hear a much more and especially because when you play with the round bit you tend to uh, to, to hit the string with more of the pick and just the, the pick tend to slide off the string versus even if I play it completely flat against the string, 
versus the pointy bits of the spec that doesn't have more, you know, doesn't have more surface to slide. So the pick angle, this is possibly the most important one. I hope, you know, we'll zoom in and I hope that this is easy to see. So what I mean with pick angle is not just the angle in the direction, let's say, if I push down the pick with my thumb or up both with my thumb and index finger, let's say um, George Benson plays a lot with a pick like this, angled up. Okay, and I tend to play with a pick uh, with a pick angled down, so to speak, because I like to to push up on the string a lot. Okay. Um, also, there is the angle in this direction, so to speak, so that the pick is not flat against the string. I find that sometimes you want the sound of the pick flat against the string. Okay, so if I play with the pick angled, so there's a lot less, a lot less transient than this. I'm going to play that with a pick flat against the string. So I'm hitting the, the, uh, the string like dead, 90 degrees. So you hear how much more mellow the sound is when you hit it at an angle, so to speak. So try and explore these two angles, you know, the up or down, basically pushing the, the pick with your thumb up or down and angling the pick uh, in this direction, so to speak. So the mix of the two angles. Um, especially if you're strumming. I find that this is quite true if you're like, you know, imagine playing an acoustic guitar. You want a, a more mellow sound or a brighter sound. So pointed up the pick, uh, dead on the string. Now angled pick with the shoulder of the pick. So you can see, you can hear, there's a small difference. I think this, this comes through if I play with a brighter sound. So there's quite a difference if you, you know, if you think of this, this variables already. So if I play by, you know, by the bridge, by the neck, Let's say the brightest sound could be playing by the bridge, same pickup by the bridge with a point of the pick and the pick flat on against the string. Versus if I played with the shoulder of the pick at an angle on a closer to the neck. you hear the, how velvety the sound is. And I've, I've changed nothing. I didn't change any of the EQ. I didn't change the pickup. I changed nothing. All I changed is the location and what, what side and the angle of the pick. See how much the sound changes. And it changes also the way you, you play, so to speak. I find sometimes even like how far you hold the pick, some people tend to, like Panathini tends to have a lot of pick out of his hands uh, versus like a lot of metal players, like shredders, they tend to have very little of that pick outside of the, of the fingers, so to speak. Um, the next one is predominance of upstrokes or downstroke. So let's say if I play jazz, I tend to have a lot of upstroke. <laughs> Because obviously I want to have, because I want swing. But let's say if I play gypsy jazz, I have a lot of a predominance of downstrokes. Because obviously they have a lot of patterns that are like down, up, down, down, up, down. So that that changes the sound a little bit as well. Uh, the next one is a speed and pressure of the pick stroke. So let's say. 
Larry Carlton plays quite gent it's quite gentle on the string. Well, let's say somebody like John Bonamassa would probably just hammer the strings quite heavily. You can hear that, especially if you play blues. A lot of blues players tend to hammer the strings, so to speak, to have that consistency of sound. I would say jazz musicians tend to have, and pop musicians tend to have a much gentler. This is something I try to explain to students, especially like the beginners, like the balance between pressure between your hands. And this is a lot to do if you are predominant, uh, like if you're right-handed or left-handed. So, you, you know, if you're left-handed, your strong hand is your left hand and and the right right-handed tend to have a, a heavier um, right hand. But then that's not necessarily true because let's say left hand, uh, somebody that is left-handed might have less control of his, his right hand or, or her right hand. And they tend to hammer the strings of the beginning to the play like, like this. Okay, sorry about that. But uh, that's, uh, that, that's something that I explain in, in the balance of pressure between the two hands. So the, the pressure of, of the downstrokes and upstrokes and of strumming and the pressure of how hard you actually press with the left hand. Because sometimes when you have a buzz note, like if your note is buzzing, like that, beginners tend to think that they have to pick harder to make a clean sound, where sometimes is either they're not pressing hard enough or they're not pressing close to the fret. Okay, so you have to get the right balance between your hands. And sometimes also, like, you won't realize it, but the harder you pick, the harder you tend to press down on the string. So to speak, it's kind of like your body wants to balance everything, where sometimes it's okay to have a balance of, of your hands. Sometimes you want to, let's say, press harder, or you, you might need to press harder with your left hand and be more gentle with the right hand if that is your picking hand. So, you know, press harder with your fretting hand and be more gentle with the, um, uh, you know, with the, with the uh, picking hand. Uh, there, there are a couple of musicians that I that I know. They're very, very smooth. And if you want that kind of smooth sound, this is pretty much what you have to do. You have to be cleaner with your left, with your fretting hand. So try to press, uh, you know, get a good pressure on on the notes and be gentler with, you know. <laughs> So every note, so every note is clear, but you're not hammering the guitar. So the difference would be versus, you know, neither are wrong, but you can hear that the sound changes quite a bit. So to do. Automatically, I kind of want to play blues when I when I hammer the strings a bit harder, so to speak. So and speed as well is quite important because sometimes, especially with the strumming, I find that uh, this is something that I have to try and and force people at the beginning because people at the beginning tend to rake through the strings. Where if you want a clear sound, you want you want speed, okay? And some of it is this is the whipping motion of the right hand. And some of it, if you, say if you're strumming, is the width of your strumming motion, so that when you hit the strings, you're hitting the strings all at once. Okay. okay. So you see that um, even when I do the kind of big band thing, you know, playing in four. I still have that whipping motion and, and I think of brushing the strings rather than 
you know, sometimes when you play rock, you want to actually dig in, you want that attack, you know. So you want that, you know, if you play Led Zeppelin type stuff, you want that heavy attack, you know. Or some more kind of honky rock and roll. Basically here I'm playing with, like by grazing the strings, as I call it, with the pointy bit of the pick by the, by the you know, the edge of, of the nearly, nearly playing over the bridge. Okay, that's that kind of Rolling Stones thing. So I want that really raw sound, which is kind of the opposite the opposite of that kind of warm and velvety sound of the jazz, which is more, again, more to do with that. You know, that, uh, the brushing, so to speak, that you do with a pick, like, and a whipping motion. Okay, um, just one thing that I wanted to add is sometimes I, I hear so many teachers, you know, stressing uh, and, I've, and I've made videos that, you know, obviously for beginners, uh, the the shape that you have, the, you know, that your left hand finger has to have when you fret, you know, the arched thing. And that is true to a certain extent. I think at the very beginning, people explain that because you start from open string chords where you don't want to hit the strings that are next to, you know, your fretting fingers, so to speak. But really, that's not... Uh, it, it's a bit of a spectrum where, let's say, you have... The position that is arched and the position is fl uh, flat for different reasons you can be let's say actually playing a bar or you actually want to stop the string below let's say if you play stuff that is like funk you're playing with your finger flat uh, or, or actually by pressing under other fingers uh, so that's not the you know the the arched finger thing is something that I think should be explained differently. You know, it's one of the the positions because sometimes you want to again have the finger flat playing other you know fretting other strings or the finger flat because you want to st stop other strings. Sometimes I have my finger flat because I want to string uh, stop the string above, okay, or below, okay. So I want only one of the only one of the sounds to. So again, that's another thing to to think about, so to speak. Um, so again, to to summarize this, uh, you know, I, I can say that all these are variables that have to be um, held in consideration to have a like a clean sound. That is whatever you want it to be. Do you want something with a heavy attack? Do you want something with a mellow attack? Do you want something warm? Do you want something more punchy? Do you want something that is, um, you know, clean or muted? Uh, and this is how, by by exploring this, you know, these variables, you end up with something that you, you know gives you more control of your bass sound, so to speak. Hope this makes sense. If you have any suggestion, leave them in the comment section. Uh, if you have any other um, suggestion for us, uh, and as always, check out this, you know, all the stuff in the description, all the links to to all my products on my website, patches, ebooks, backing tracks, all the usual stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. And as always, if you think that this video was of value to you, feel free to share it on social media and uh, with friends or uh, stick in forums, whatever, it, it all helps the channel. And as always, subscribe and like the video. Take care, bye-bye.